Well, a happy Red Shirt Wednesday to you, my friends. Uh, Bible Billy O here. And just wanted to try and encourage some of you before Christmas uh, uh, season sets in. And hopefully you'll have time to be with family and uh, to rest. That's important. And eat lots of food. That's good. That's an important thing sometimes. Um, I was driving to work today, and I, I am thankful that I get to wear my red shirt because it reminds me of the authority God's placed over my life. And do you know, uh, he does place uh, people and even organizations, uh, even the people in charge at my work, he places uh, over us for our good. And uh, I love the scripture often we pray in our prayer group um, from Proverbs, how the Lord, it says, steers the heart of the king, like an irrigation ditch is what that is. It's a, a figurative uh, way of speaking. That means he's bringing provision just like um, a farmer would make uh, troughs for irrigation for water to come to the plants where they're needed. And that's the way he does with authority. And that's why we're supposed to pray for those in authority over us. So I wear my red shirt and uh, uh, kind of a, a show of respect uh, to those who are watching over me and my family's life. I thought about the difference between the word power and authority. In, in the Bible, many times the two go hand in hand. Um, in the Greek, and I won't get into deep, deep thought here with Greek language, but uh, the word power is where I believe they derive our word for dynamite. It's a dynamos, and uh, it means that it's the, um, the ability to get something done. And Jesus sent out the disciples under a power and authority uh, to get things done, and he gave them the ability. The ability was what power really meant. Now, authority uh, just like a bodybuilder can have great power, but he doesn't have the authority to stop and pull me over like a policeman. Authority means that you have um, a control, that you have a, not just control, but um, um, you're, you're sent forth in a mission to, to, to accomplish something that's going to get taken care of because you have a right uh, and rule over a situation. And we've been given a certain amount of limited authority as believers in Christ, and we do want to exercise that in its proper way. I would never take on the enemy of our souls uh, face, face on. I would rather open the door, and if it's Satan, say, well, my big brother Jesus will take care of you here. But we can pray for authority as believers um, to take captive thoughts uh, many times there's spiritual warfare going on and we can say, Lord, raise up a banner, raise up a flag. The standard is what it's called uh, by your Holy Spirit and uh, help me to walk under that banner today that all the powers of darkness can see they don't have control over me, but I belong to one who is much more powerful than them. And there's great examples in scripture. One, I just wanted to go to one of my favorite books is the book of Mark I mentioned the other day. And the disciples are in a, a boat. Jesus told them to go to the other side. Well, when Jesus tells you you're going to do something, you can count on it. When he promises something, it will come to pass, even when it doesn't look like it. And some of us are going through circumstances right now where we say, I don't see any end to this. I don't see any good coming from it. But they're in the boat. And... Um, as they're out, he says uh, in chapter 4 of Mark, verse 37, a great arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat on the ship, so that it was now full. The, the boat, if you're a fisherman, you know it's not a good thing when your boat's getting full of water. And it says that while this is going on, this great storm, Jesus is in the hinder part, that's a King James word, he's in the back uh, end of the boat, asleep on a pillow. Wow. Well, that'll preach. And they went to awake him and said, Master, do you not care that we're going to perish? How can you sleep? And I love this about Jesus. He doesn't rebuke them right away. He doesn't say, why did you interrupt me from sleeping? Don't you know I'm in control? Don't you know I have authority? He gets up and immediately, like so often he does in the scriptures, he takes care of the problem first. He ministers to the folks before he uh, addresses them with a lesson. It says, he arose and he rebuked the wind. That's a strong word. And he said to the sea, now he's speaking to the sea and the wind, peace, peace be still. 
and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And that's a strong language also here, a great calm. Can you imagine going from one moment, a hurricane type of a wind situation, the boat's about to sink, to a great calm? We need great calm today. And now he turns to the disciples, and he doesn't say, you dummies. I probably would have. No, I wouldn't. I, uh, I love how Jesus says, why are you so fearful? He asks a question. Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? He talks about times in scripture where they had little faith. He gives examples of great faith. And now here he says, you have no faith. And they had fear inside of them because they recognized whom it was that they stood in front of. They feared exceedingly and they said to one another, what manner of man is this that he has authority? that even the wind and the sea obey him. That's right. He, he spoke to the waves. He spoke to the storm. He speaks to your situation today. And because he created everything, it all obeys him. And there's great scriptures. I think of Proverbs 8, where it is shown that he's at the feet of God the Father, as it were, um, a part of the great plan of creation. He's the creating, I don't want to say force, but he and the Holy Spirit and the Father are one in the Godhead, Godhead and they hold all things together. Colossians says, in him were made all things. Nothing was made that wasn't made by or through him, and he holds all things together. They consist and have their being because of Jesus. And so no matter what it is you're going through, I want you to know he has the power and he has authority. And he wants us to rest under that, that umbrella of authority. Pastor always used to talk about when we step outside from the umbrella, well, you're going to get the hail and the rain falling on your head. But if you stay under the umbrella of authority, and even those he's put in leadership, pray for our president, pray for those in government, pray for those um, that God's placed in authority immediately over you, your parents, to a certain age, they're still in authority. And in a sense, they still have authority. I go to them for counsel many times. Or your pastor, or in the case of me going into work right now, those managers, those supervisors, there's a few new ones on the line. I um, try to go out of my way to tell them I appreciate them and I'm praying for them. And I'm praying for you as well today. If I don't speak with you before, have a very Merry Christmas. And uh, just remember to whom it is that you are belong to and um, he's got an answer at hand maybe it's a Christmas miracle you need and I'm praying that he'll bring that um, yeah that's all I got to say for now have a blessed day bye for now bye bye